Okay, so let's, let's talk a little about uh, the different techniques for dermal fillers, dermal filler techniques. There's, there's a, a specific technique that you're going to use when you're doing these types of injections. All right, so let's, let's go over this a little bit. Um, first of all, we're going to be practicing this afternoon. So what we're doing now in practice, you may not have to do when you're in your own practice. For instance, we may mark the area right now with a, a surgical pen, right? And this is done right now for practicing, all right? One of the things that you're going to do after you're done with your, after you're done with your history and physical, you want to have your person sitting upright. Okay. What, what you want to do, unlike Botox, Botox, you can have your person lying down, you can have them sitting up, it doesn't really matter. With fillers, you want to see the area that you're going to inject. You want to see the defect, okay, the area. If you have your person lying back, gravity is going to pull the skin back and you're not going to necessarily see where you want to inject. So pretend she's sitting down. What you want to do is if you turn your head like this, okay, can you bring your head up a little bit, is you want to focus, you want to be very, um, very meticulous with what you're doing. You want to take a close look and you want to see the defect, all right, and you're coming in close. What you don't want to do is you don't want to push the skin back like this. I see that a lot. You don't want them lying down because you're, gonna, you're not going to see the fold, all right? And what we're doing with these syringes, what we're doing with the needle, is we're doing threads. It's called linear thread threading, linear threads. And what you're doing is you're advancing your needle and syringe right into the fold, okay? And then you're laying the product down as you're pulling out, okay? And that's called the linear thread. Okay, so the main thing I wanted to show you was, was that, and I also just wanted to show you that when you have your person, make sure that they're sitting upright as opposed to lying down, because if they're lying down, it's, it's a little bit more difficult to see what you're doing. All right, usually what I do, again, this whole procedure is only going to take you about five minutes. Start with one side. If the product has lidocaine, what you do is then you go to the other side. While the product is kicking in on this side, you start to work on that side. And you do a thread here, then you do a thread here, then you go to the other side, then you do a thread here, and you keep going back and forth until you're done. What I usually do is, is I use about two-thirds of the syringe, the remaining one-third, that's usually when I stop, I give the patient the mirror, all right, and I have them look, and usually they're going to say, well, maybe can you do a little bit more over here, or can you do a little bit more over here, and then I work with them and I finish it up. Don't give them the mirror right from the beginning, because you're going to be working on this side, and you'll do one thread, and they'll right away say, well, what about over here? You forgot over here. So do the best you can. Do, do it the way you think it should be, but leave a little bit left and show them the result, and then usually they're going to say, well, can you also work on this area and do a little bit more here? Yeah. Now, let me just go over with you. I mentioned this a little bit earlier, how to hold the syringe. The reason why this is important is because this is going to help you with your depth of penetration. And it is important that you're injecting this the correct depth because if you're too superficial, you're going to end up with lumpiness and it's not going to look, it's not going to look good at all. If you end up too deep, what's going to happen is nothing necessarily dangerous about it. You're not going to necessarily have a bad effect. It's just you're going to waste the product because it's too deep and you don't see the result. All right, I see a lot of people holding the syringe like this. Okay, if you hold a syringe like this, chances are you're going to end up too superficial. And just practice that on, our, on your own, you'll see what I mean. So you're coming in like this, you're almost too superficial. All right, if you hold the syringe like this, and I see this a lot, I see a lot of doctors and nurses holding the syringe like this, all right, it, maybe it's good for certain other injections, but for this, it, it becomes very, very deep, the injection. So your vent, you're coming over here, your depth, your angle is just going to be too deep. All right, so try not to hold the needle in the syringe like this. The best way to do it is to hold it the traditional way, which is like this. And almost by default, if you come in next to the person, you're almost going to have the correct depth without even knowing it. Of course, we're going we're gonna to practice it, and we'll look very closely to make sure that your depth is correct. But try to start off the right way by holding the syringe like this. The other thing that you want to do is once you advance your syringe and your needle, you want to tint the needle back a little bit, and you want to look to see the outline of the needle. That's what you're looking for, and that's going to give you an idea if, if you're too deep or if you're too superficial, is bring back the needle and look. If you see the color, if you're, or if you see the serial number to that needle, you are way too superficial, okay? So, so take it out, reposition, and try again. If you bring it back and you're not seeing anything, then you're too deep. You do want to see a little bit of an outline of the needle. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about uh, the different techniques that you, that you can use for lips. How do we inject lips? Anybody? Now, obviously, that's why you're here for the course today, but anybody started doing any of this, you know, injecting lips or had it done or seen it done? It's really not that difficult. What I'm going to tell you is a, a couple pearls, I think, that, that are going to help a lot. One of the things I see when I watch people doing uh, lips is they have a really hard time, you know, grabbing the person's lip and, and palpating because it's so slippery. 
the technique that, that we're going to teach you this afternoon is you don't even have to hold the lip like that. All right. First of all, you come from the side. All right. And the idea is you're going to go around the vermilion border all the way around the side. So you're coming in from the side and you're injecting the lips like this. Okay. So just to give you a quick summary, and then we'll go into more de uh, detail later, there's actually three different things that you could do with the lips. Okay. One is you can go completely around the lip border. All right, and that's, that's very effective. That's going to uh, create a nice shape, particularly patients that have very, very thin lips. It's going to really enhance the border, all right, and their lips are going to stand out. And chances are that's all you need to do. You're not even, you won't even need to do anything more. Uh, if the person has very, very thin lips, you can add volume by going directly beneath that border that we just mentioned and going into the lip and adding a little bit of filler right in there. All right, that's going to add volume. There's a third technique that we do a lot, and it's very effective. And what this is going to do is this is going to evert the lip, all right? So what it'll do, for instance, in the bottom lip, if, if you were to do it on the bottom lip, and I could show you here, is it's going to cause this lip to drop down like this, okay, to evert or to plump out a little bit. The way to do that, and we're going to practice this in a little bit, is you're going to place, you're going to make your injection along the wet, dry border of the lip, all right? And you're going to do that very evenly and very smoothly. So you, you drop the lip down like this, okay, and you're injecting right across like this, right along the wet dry border. Okay. And when you do that, this person is going to this person is going to do that. Okay. So just like that. Okay, it's going to evert the lip. Um, that's really that's a quick little, you know, five minute summary. Obviously we're going to get into more detail, but I just wanted to point out, you know, essentially what you're doing is you're injecting along the vermilion border is one way is long one way. You don't have to do all three techniques. Okay, sometimes you can end up just doing what I, uh, the, what I mentioned about the vermilion border. The other way is, is sometimes if the person wants just a little bit and they just want you to evert their lip, just do along the wet dry border. The other thing is important is, is you're the sculptor. You're the person who's, who's responsible for the outcome. And whenever you see patients walking around or people walking around and they, they don't look natural, it, it, sometimes it's because the patient walked into the doctor's office or whoever and said, you know what, I just want you to work on my upper lip. I don't think that I really need too much anywhere else. Just put a little bit on the upper lip. And that's fine. Your patient could, could tell you what they want, all right? but it's important for you to understand that what's going to create the best aesthetic or the best cosmetic appearance. All right? The bottom lip is typically more plump than the top lip. The bottom lip should be more plump. Okay? So even though the patient's asking for just the top lip, you want to make sure that, and you can do that, but you want to make sure that the bottom lip is still more plump than the top lip. Otherwise, you've got that unusual appearance where the top is, is very thick. Okay, so they can tell you what they want and everything, but you need to come back with, with their recommendations. Okay, so this is, this is a, a specific technique for injecting the lips, and some, some people call this the push-through technique. Right? As you know with fillers, really with a lot of other things, when you make your injection, um, you typically advance your needle, and then you, you lay down a thread of product as you're pulling out, right? That's typically the way that you do these types of injections in the nasolabial fold area. And it's called linear threading. And you could do the same thing in the lips, okay, where you could advance along the vermilion border, all right? You advance your 30 gauge half inch needle, and then you uh, depress your plunger, and you lay the product down as you're coming out. That's called the linear threading technique, and that's fine, and you can do that. There is another technique that I like. It's called the push-through technique. And the way this works, it's, it's, really, it's really nice when you actually do this, is you enter along the side, okay, just like you normally do with, with this. You enter along the side, and you're, you're pressing, you're depressing your plunger, and you're laying down the product as you're going forward. And what you'll see is the product is going to come out, and it's going to, it almost looks like it's, it's following its own path, but it's not. It's following the, the canal that's, that's in the vermilion border, and it's following through that. So what you're going to see is, is you advance the syringe and the needle, and you press the product, and it fills in ahead of where you're going. All right. Then you take the needle out, and you put a little bit more forward, and you press it, and it advances through the canal that you're going into. Okay, and they call that the push-through technique. And I like to do that a lot. It's, it's very, very effective. Okay, so we're here at Empire Medical Training, and we're going to do a demonstration of a dermal filler, and we're going to inject marionette lines. Okay, so there's a, there's a very specific technique. We're going to talk about a couple different things when we actually do the technique. One is, is the traditional linear threading, okay, which we kind of talked about already, and that is when you're advancing your syringe and your needle, and you're, you're laying down a, a thread of product. 
The other technique, so the nice thing about demonstrating marionette lines is that you can actually do a couple different techniques, two or three different techniques. One is the linear threading, which we do a lot in the nasolabial fold, where you advance the needle and, and um, syringe forward, you lay your product down, and you come out. The other technique is fanning technique. And what you're doing with that is you just advance your needle, and you're moving the needle like this as you're laying down product. And a lot of these techniques are so that you don't have to do multiple injections and enter the, pierce the skin multiple times. You want to be able to uh, pierce the skin once and fan it like this and you're going to cover a bigger area than just the linear threading. The other technique, which we may or may not do right now, depending, is cross hatching. And what that is, is you make your linear thread here and then you come across, take the needle out and you come across that way. And it just covers the area you know, a little bit much better actually. I'm going to kind of pass this around a little bit. It comes with a 30 gauge needle. Okay, you want to make sure that when you screw on your cap that it's, you know, you're screwing it on tight enough. I don't know if you ever had the, and it happens if you're not careful, where you're, you screw on the cap, it wasn't tight enough, and then it pops off. Okay, so try to make sure that you screw that on. There's always a little air bubble in there. It's not dangerous or anything, but just kind of push that through. But anyway, that's, that's pretty much your syr what your syringe looks like. It almost looks like it's just air in there, but that's your product. It's a viscous hyaluronic acid. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to just work a little bit. We're not going to, it's just going to, we're looking for a subtle change. And just for the demonstration purposes right now, we're not going to overly, you know, overly do too much. So we're going to just inject a little bit right over here and right over here, all right, the corners of the mouth. It's a nice technique because it does a couple things. It fills in that area, it could also bring that up a little bit. What's the other technique that you could use if you inject, I'll give you a hint, you're injecting the, the DAO muscle, the depressor angularis, all right, and that's, uh, you're injecting Botox here and that brings the corner of the mouth up just a little bit. So if you use that in conjunction with this, you actually get a very, very nice result. Okay, first thing you do is try to make this area nice and clean, okay? Okay, good. Let's do this side over here. Good. The other thing when you're injecting lips, this is not quite lips, but it's close to it. You're going to see that the patient's, you know, asking for water and licking their lips because it's very, very hydrophilic, these products. And they're, and they're drawing water molecules in right from, right from around the area. So it's going to dry that area out, which is, you know, it's not a problem or anything. It's just, that's what it does. Okay. Always have your gauze right, right next to you because this way, in case it bleeds a little bit, you know, you just dab it. Worst thing in aesthetics is you don't want any blood dripping on the patient or anything like that. It messes up their clothing and, and it's a little sloppy too. Okay, so can everybody see okay? So let's start over here. And try to, when you come in, you're coming in from the side, don't approach them with the, the needle and syringe. You don't want them to see that. Try to work from the side and then you come in and you talk to them like this and the syringe and needle is over here, all right? And then you let them know. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna inject right over here a little bit. There's also lidocaine in this product too, so. And then what I'll do is as the lidocaine is kick in, then I'll go to this side and work on that. And then I like to go back and forth. It takes, you know, kills some time. You talk to the patient person, makes it feel a little bit more comfortable. Okay, so just a little stick right there. Bring your head up a little bit more. Yeah, that's it, perfect. Everybody's watching? Okay, there we go. Is that okay? Hopefully not too, mm -hmm. hurts too much. And then just nice and slow. There we go. Just take your time. Okay, now the fanning technique is where you're coming in like this and you're just turning the syringe. Just like what we're doing right now. As you pull out. There we go. Open your mouth for a second. Perfect. That's it, that's it. Now you can see a little bit already. I didn't do very much. I only did about 0.1, okay? But you could already see, you see that plumped out. Don't get too, you know, too aggressive. Don't put too much in there, just a little bit. People typically want to have a natural look. All right, so that's the better look, the natural look. All right, so let's do a little bit more. All right, we're gonna do linear threading and we're gonna do the fanning technique. So since the idea is you want to get it here, you enter a little bit lower. So let's enter right here. And she's definitely a good patient because she's not moving around or anything. And everybody's looking, they can see that, that fanning technique, right? Good. And then come out. Good. Nice. Look at that, you guys. 
Can you zoom in on that okay? She did not need much at all there. I'm going to go to the other side. That may be all she needs. Open your mouth for a second. And always check. You know, sometimes it comes, if you're not careful, it'll come through on the other side, which is okay. You just want to make sure that you're molding and palpating around. She's not even bleeding much at all. Okay, so now let me work on this side a little bit here. And then when I'm about two-thirds done with the procedure, that's when I'm going to give her a mirror, and I'm going to have her look, and then she's going to say, well, maybe you forgot to do this area over here, or she'll kind of point out. Okay, so now turn your head a little bit this way. There we go. And always kind of figure out a way to, to brace your hands. I remember we talked about that yesterday. Except don't, don't brace your hand. I always see people burying the, the tip of their finger in the top of their nose and <laughs> make them comfortable, you know. So just like this, they're nice and comfortable. There we go, a little, little poke right there. Steve, you mentioned something about the vocal. There's the, the what? In there already. There's, yeah, there's local anesthetic. There's lidocaine in here. So the local, the, the nerve block we were talking about is with, uh, is when you're doing lips. Okay, and then we stop. Open your mouth for a second. The idea here is you're not molding it around, you're just gently palpating to make sure that it's smooth, that you've covered the area nicely. Okay, that's really all you want to do here. So now I'm going to go in again, check a little bit more. So now you're going to do the fanning too? Yeah, uh-huh, exactly. So let me, let me fan a little bit more here. You're also, you're also looking at the plunger to see, to make sure that the product is coming out and how much and how fast it is. When people ask me, you know, what's the dosage? It's visual, you know, it's not 0.2 cc's or three milligrams, it's, it's what you see as a dosage. Here we go, that's coming out nice. Yeah, that's coming out really good. Okay, open your mouth again for a second. Yeah, that's nice. And then remember we talked about earlier, when you explain to your patient, you know, this, this is a, a very hydrophilic product. So what's going to happen is you're going to feel this product here for a couple of weeks. Eventually, it's gonna, you're not going to feel it. And you're probably going to think, hey, I thought the doctor said that product was going to last, you know, six months. I don't feel it anymore. It's been replaced with water molecules. That's how this works. It draws in water molecules, and that's mainly the effect that you're getting, the filling effect. It's from the water. So you'll feel this for a couple of, couple of weeks at least. Mm -hmm. All right. Even myself, I had this recently. I could still feel it, um, but much less than when I had it about a month ago. Okay, that's it. So I'm just going to keep doing a little bit more here, all right, and then I'll go back to the other side. As long as you guys are following along. There we go. Perfect. Let's go to this side here. Good. Usually deep net, uh, by the way, deep marionette lines, you know, you can end up using two Juvederm Ultra Pluses. Okay, this is Prevail Soak. This is a little bit of a less viscous, you know, a layman's way of saying it would be thinner product, but it's a less viscous product. On something like this, I would normally like to use a Juvederm Ultra Plus. It's thicker, it's going to fill it better, you know. Here we might have to use two or three syringes. But normally, I would probably use one Juvederm Ultra Plus for both sides. Yeah, that's really about it, though. Good, good, good. That's coming out really nice. Okay, open your mouth again. Yeah, perfect. That's really is. That's really all there is to it. Okay, let me go back in here. Just any questions or anything? What do you guys think so far? We're going to be practicing this right now. It's nice that it's immediate. Yeah, that's really true. I mean, Botox is a great procedure to do, but you know, you don't get to see the the, the patient's reaction right away. You got to wait a little bit. This is so immediate. They're usually very very happy. Open your mouth in. Pretty good, pretty good. Oh, you mean for her? Yeah. Oh, I thought you meant, yeah, yeah. She's, uh, she's, she's actually, she seems to be tolerating her pretty well. It, it's, it's a little uncomfortable. How, how do you feel? Um, how you, do you just... feel, you can feel the initial stick, and then you feel it plumping, which is a bit of an odd sensation, but mm -hmm. at this point, the, the whole, this whole, like, the corner area of my mouth is totally numb. 
This has lidocaine in it. Uh huh. Yes. Mm -mm. Can't feel my mouth. Oh, I did touch the face, didn't I? It's okay. It's okay. Okay. I'm gonna keep going here, you guys. You can do a little bit more. There we go. Every time when you go next on the other side, on each side, do you go a little bit lower? Up it's there's no rule or anything on that. It's just it's just wherever wherever you'd see that you can use a little bit of product. Okay, now let me see where do I want to put the remaining amount. Can you turn your head a little bit? Okay, now the other way. All right, I think I'm gonna go right. I'm going to go right over here. This little bit I'm going to put right here. There we go. Okay, good. Now, let me just put some alcohol there. And you are good. And try to clean them up nice, you know, before they look in the mirror and make sure they're not they're not leaving your office with any blood or anything. Did you have any makeup on? I guess mm -hmm. I took it all off. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let's see. How soon can they reapply the makeup product? Um, there's there's no specific number, but soon after. You know, as long as there's no blood or bleeding or anything like that. 